Hello, I'm Andrew Salmon and welcome back to WEC TV Interviews. Now, one of the most talked about forms of energy at the Congress is, of course, shale gas, a true game changer. But shale gas is also engulfed in controversy over its extraction methods. And nobody knows this better than French power utility GDF Suez. GDF Suez is engaged in shale gas globally, and yet in its home country, France, it's unable to extract due to prohibitions on fracking. Is there a way forward? Well, let's ask GDF Suez. They're represented here at the Congress by their Vice President, Jean-Marie Dorje. Jean-Marie, welcome to WEC TV. Thank you, welcome to Okay. Jean-Marie, you're looking at this from a very global pers um, perspective. What do you see as the geographies uh, with the most potential for shale gas? Okay. Well, US first is clearly uh, a big, big game changer here already. Yeah. Uh, it has changed already many, many things for the gas business. First of all, US clearly can be a long-lasting, non-importing country. Mm. So the self-sufficiency, both for gas and eventually yeah. for oil, is now uh, at reach for the US. Yeah. As a consequence, they are reindustrializing the country. The price of gas has never been so low. Mm. Gas is penetrating power generation. It's substitution to coal and then they are emitting less CO2 than they used to do before. And gas is now entering into the transportation sector. Hmm. At the top of that, it is more than likely that the US will be an exporter of LNG yeah. to Europe and to Asia. And if you t even if you take a relatively conservative view, let's say 50 million tons of LNG flowing from the US to Asia, mm, for mm, example, mm. That's nevertheless be at least 15% of the con total consumption of Asia. So it is not something which is insignificant. So it's a big, big, big game changer, both in terms of economies, at the, at the benefit of the US, of course, but also potentially uh, could play a role on the international market, either because the US does not need as much shell gas, a, as much gas as they used to, to mm, need from, from other sources, from yeah. import, yeah. but also because they may contribute to supplying gas to the rest of the world. Okay. The question is uh, whether there will be other shale gas significant volumes produced somewhere else. Right. I think to make it very simple, the answer should be yes. Mm. But the question is when. Reserves are very abundant in, in many regions. And of course, the very first focus we all have in is about China. Mm. It seems that China has quite a very large potential yeah. for shale gas. And, and there is no doubt that one day or the other, they will produce that shale gas. Uh, what makes prediction difficult when it comes to timing is, of course, the fact that to be successful in shale gas production, you need to have a number of, 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 of um, elements to be put at the same place. Yeah. Not only you need the proper regulation and the proper geology, but you also need to have a proper water element. We, we need water. Mm. Uh, uh, sources to, uh, to, uh -huh. to frack and, and to produce shale gas. Yeah. Uh, so you would need at the same time a good geology, a good water accessibility and treatment facility. You need a good uh, regulatory environment, proper mm. uh, regulatory environment. And of course you need to have good oil service companies mm. with a yeah. high level of technology. Sure. So I think the question is relatively clear that more and more shale gas will be produced around the world. Mm. But the time when all the elements can be brought together still remains a bit an issue, as, yeah, as you mentioned correctly, for Europe, for example, where mm. it seems that we have also in Europe mm. quite uh, significant volumes of shale gas, but where the proper regulatory regime still are not, so in, not, place. not in place. Understood. Now, of course, irony of iron is you're a French company and you're unable to carry out the shale gas business in, in your own country, France, where there's a significant public uproar and fracking is prohibited. I mean, let's address this issue of the, the European publics. There is concern over this. Is the concern over fracking justified? Um, and how should the industry help um, allay these concerns? I think anyway, uh, there is a concern and we have to take that into account fully because we have to make everything clear that we can produce yeah. in the most uh, safety way and the most uh, proper way in relation to environment. Then a few, uh, a few uh, comments. First of all, it is amazing how much progress has been done in producing shell gas in the US in a relatively mm -hmm. short period mm -hmm. of time. 
it's fair to say that U.S. they have an easier way to do, and they they like and they accept learning by doing. Where in Europe we would prefer sometimes to having yeah. everything fixed up mm. from the very moment, advanced, which explains yeah, yeah, to sure. a certain extent the concern which has been expressed by public opinions right. in, or in some cases by governments. We think that on the fundamental part of view, we don't see any reason why we should be able to demonstrate that we can produce shale gas in an, in an environmentally friendly manner. Mm. But it's also true that the situation in Europe differs from the one of the US simply because, for example, of the density of population, yeah. which definitely mm -hmm. is not the same. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned correctly that uh, today France has um, uh, prevented fracking for, yeah. for producing that kind of gas which is not necessarily mm -hmm. the situation in other European countries. It seems that, for example, the UK is, mm -hmm. is more favorable to that for the time being, although cautiously, and other European countries are also more, more open to that. So in our company, what, what we do intend to do is twofold. We will be involved in the shale gas production or the shale gas business two mm -hmm. ways. The one is producing, and we are targeting, even in Europe at the, at the present moment, some uh, projects within countries or within regulation that are more favorable. Mm. We are considering for the time being um, very seriously some UK position. Mm. I think Germany will become more open, Poland will be more open. We are also considering other possibilities in South America for the time being. Okay. And, and we know also that in Algeria where we are already mm. producing conventional gas okay. there is also quite a great potential. But we will be involved in the shale gas industry also by another way. We are, we are presently involved into an LNG export project in the US on the East Coast mm. and the Gulf of Mexico, where we uh, do uh, expect that we will get a uh, final investment decision going next mm. year. And uh, once we've got the totality of the approvals, both from the DOE and from, from the FERC, which we do expect to come normally uh, at the end of this year or, or during the course of the next year. And we will export gas from the US from, from the that US. terminal, which okay. will be to a large extent produced out of shale gas reserves. So we do intend to, we are a very global and very important gas player, and we will be also an important and global player in the shale gas business. Understood. Clearly you're making some very large investments. Good luck with your play, of course, in Europe and, and indeed also in your home country. Thank you very much. Jean-Marie, thank okay. you for joining thank us so on WEC TV. It's been great. That was Jean-Marie Dorje of GDF Suez. Don't go away, though. Please do stay with us. More interviews, more information, more good stuff coming up around the World Energy Congress 2013.